everyone, and welcome to the Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 16. So you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, and Stitcher. Uh, and you can find all those uh, links at the, the seeds of liberty.com. So today we're going to talk about the uh, recent Dylan Roof shooting um, and what uh, Obama plans to do. Uh, what did he say? He's going to give everyone more guns? No, right? <laughs> yeah. Gun control, take all the guns away, ban everything. That's the solution. Ban gun free zones is my. That's uh, the solution. That's my, that's my solution. <laughs> Whatever kills people, ban it. People should not die we, of anything. <laughs> Save so, just one life. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, so the, uh, what did that happen? It was like a few weeks ago, right? Um, so what is he, he's like 22, 23, um, you know, a kid with massive um, family problems, you know, uh, you know, divorce and just uh, domestic violence and, you know, he's on psychotropic drugs, and then his father gives him a gun for his 21st birthday, right? Wonderful gun, wonderful gift for, for a mentally unstable person. And uh, he's like heavily into like, you know, it's like obsessed with what? Like slavery and plantations and, and uh, you know, the Confederacy and, uh, you know, uh, what, apartheid, I think, right? <laughs> um, but uh, and he, and a surprise, surprise, you know, he's, he's on these psychotropic drugs and he... And he goes, he goes psychotic, which is actually very common. You know, you, most of the shootings, you know, when you look at and you look and go into the details, you know, you most often find um, mental disorders associated with it, and you know, psychotropic drugs that themselves can cause delusions, hallucinations, and psychotic episodes. So uh, that mixed in with gotta uh, get me some of those. <laughs> that mixed in with firearms is not always make a pleasant. Uh, uh, situation. So, um, so yeah, yeah. Banning, banning something uh, like guns is like uh, you know. I, I like to tell people now. It's like, it's like you know, blaming uh, uh, blaming guns for 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 you know violence is like blaming spoons for people getting fat or blaming pencils for misspelled words, right? <laughs> or, or also another great one is uh, is is if if, if you want to ban the guns because somebody got hurt, why don't you take cars away because a drunk driver killed somebody? Right, <laughs> blaming inanimate I mean, objects. I, I guess until <laughs> right? they make AI pistols or something that can just target and shoot people at will, I, I don't, I don't see how the banned guns things holds up. You know, and as we talked in previous episodes, um, anyone screaming for gun confiscation or gun banning or whatnot, they, um, they should open up a history book, not a government created history book but a, 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 a real specific hist- there <laughs> a, a, a real history book um that uh will outline pretty much every mass genocide mass population kill any mass amount of democide which is death by your own government uh in history has always always followed gun confiscation every time that is the that's 100 percent the I know people can point to places that have been disarmed. You know, Britain, they're not having a mass democide over there. Australia, et cetera, et cetera, you know. But this whole, you know, just because certain things, you know, the clock's, a clock's right twice a day, you know. Just because certain things aren't happening uh, before certain, you know, under the same variables doesn't mean that the same outcome couldn't happen. I mean, if... Uh, the government declared martial law in Britain right now. It would take them a week or two to clean everybody up because no one's armed. So you couldn't do that here in the United States right now. No soldier wants to fight back in martial law scenarios. Those are that's especially well, against their fellow brothers and I, sisters. I, well, I don't know about all that, man. Well, soldiers maybe because uh, I think what happened in Katrina and uh, also what happened after the Boston bombing is proof that. Uh, at least some of the men and women in some of the government uniforms have no problem. Those are isolated incidents. We're talking about a mass I, I, okay, gun isolated, confiscation. It doesn't isolated incident, but look how quickly they were willing to. That, that wasn't just an isolated incident. They shut down an entire section of Boston suburbs, man. That was huge. Katrina, they, the entire area. It was, you know, it was. It, it, no, it, no, it I, showed I, not... what can it showed what can happen and what these people are are actually willing to do. For based a on the fact that they no, it's not even it's it. I, in, in those instances, I honestly don't think that most of them are thinking the paycheck at that point. They are so convinced that 
they are doing the right thing, that they are, they are believing in the authority. They are, this is what they're supposed to do. They are supposed to protect the other people by, you know, the government tells them what to do, so they do it, you know? That's, it's, it's that, that is Katrina especially, when you, when you see, you know, some of the, the you know, the, the private videos that were, you know, the home videos that were basically made, some of the stuff that came out after that, and that got swept under the rug really quickly, and, and so many people to this day still don't realize that you know there was there first it was the police, and then it was the national guard, guard and soldiers going door to door, and taking people's guns away from them, all in the name of the collective safety. And they well, were taking course. the That's guns, but, they, but, done. but they, wait, they waited, you know, for a couple of days. They waited days to do this so that the only people that were left were the people that were at, out there you know that were going to be out there committing actual crimes in the first place and the people that were steadfast about sticking into you know property they had owned for you know maybe generations you know within the family and they had their guns so they were going to stay and protect their land they were going to stay and protect their house and here come these jackbooted thugs knocking on doors and uh saying yeah you have to you know we have the legal authority. If I, if I remember weapons. correctly, it, the the most of the National Guard that were doing that did not. They were they were lied to about what their mission was until they were on the ground. I, yeah, I know. I, I heard that story too. But that. But again, they still not not all, but you know enough to carry it out went through with it. And that's the thing. It's like you can. Oh, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, I have a hard time having sympathy for them. That oh, you got dropped on this in the last minute. Yeah, that sucks. But you still said yes. You know that. No, that's I, whole, I'm not. I'm not giving them a thing. pass. The, but yeah, you, but, what, but a lot we're of, talking a lot about full-on state-sanctioned gun confiscation, repeal of the Second uh, Second Amendment. I, you know, I, I don't think. I think if if something like that happened, I think that if, you know, Obama, whoever the next president, Hillary, whatever, our our Congress goes out and says, hey, you're not allowed to own guns anymore. Uh, you can turn them in peacefully, or we can come get them. Uh, not only is that an impossibility at this time uh, in in this country, um, but I, I think um, a lot of them. I would hope that a lot of American uh, uh, weapons manufacturers would 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 refuse to sell the United States, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, because you'd be cutting out. A, they'd be cutting out a lot of their business as well. Um, I, I I just don't think that that gun confiscation. I don't think that gun banning is gonna they can ban down to the last, you know, you can only have a one-shot pistol that has a 22 caliber in it, and it, you can only have one bullet in the chamber and one bullet in the has to be locked up in a safe. I mean, they, they can do all that shit they want, but that's not going to stop people. You know, if we've learned anything from Prohibition, Prohibition has never worked. Oh, ever. Well, yeah, of course. I, I, don't, I don't think it could work on the large scale either I, I you know but i wouldn't i wouldn't put it past them for that's what that's every one of these you know quote unquote tragedies and yes it is tragic that people are you know mindlessly murdered in in any of these situations you know uh, um but the every single time these happen the first thing that the first thing that the, the gun control crowd does is come out and start because they're they're testing the waters every single time that's that's how laws eventually get put into place is they the certain factions of the government will come up with these crazy schemes of what they want to happen and they they just throw things out there and they test the waters and they see how much traction it gains and if it does you know that's why things like the last time with sandy hook there was you know when feinstein came out with her um her her her, her you know proposition for the for the you know the assault weapon ban and everything all over again she even said she was, you know, she was quoted as saying that it had basically been sitting in her desk for like I think ten years or something, because they did they they try it and if it fails or even if it succeeds but not to the level they want they just hold on to the legislation and they just wait till the next, you know, the the next crisis comes up. You know, what's that that line that always gets it? Yeah, never let a good crisis go to waste. <laughs> yeah, the one, it's it's always attributed to a man, a Rahm, Rahm Emanuel, but people have said that long before him. He's just the, yeah. you know, I, I've said before, he's just like the contemporary Alinsky. version that it's 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 been, you know, it's been. But even before Alinsky, there's people that have said that, you know, it's it's the idea. It's that's how that's how propaganda works. That's how this state has perpetuated. Well, well yeah, yeah, war is the health of the state. Yeah. Yeah, you know what what really um, shocks me is um, is how 
when you look at when you see mainstream media, you never ever see reports of of everyday citizens who are armed preventing crime. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like counteracting an actual criminal, a thief or a rapist, and, you know, protecting innocence or scaring him away or shooting him down before he actually hurt somebody. You know, you only hear about that through alternative media. And, uh, and it's just amazing how 1984 type censorship of, of uh, information is alive and well. <laughs> <laughs> Kids and, bringing guns or, or crackers, the shape of guns, are getting expelled from school, and it's like, yeah, yeah. Or, or, have even, you went home and watched TV? This kid goes home and watches TV. NCIU's on. Uh, it, it, all these cop shows are on. Every one of those cops has a motherfucking gun in their hand. What do you think he's gonna do? He goes home every channel. Gun, cartoon, gun, yeah, but, cartoon, but, gun, cartoon. Well no, well, no, it's not though. It, what you said is, I was actually gonna say that uh, on to, what, to what Danilo was saying. The cop shows are the things that they do show, and you're right, Danilo. They don't, they don't show the average citizen stopping crimes, but they have no problem showing police officers stopping crime, and that's the yeah. reason that that's the reason that all the TV dramas and all the highest rated ones. And, they show Batman. And I, I will, I will have I w- to admit, I win. I win. <laughs> the Batman is admit. Batman is completely status. We can we can go into that. We, he, he <laughs> is not, status. He's, he's, no he's, way. he's a hardcore status. So that's yeah. Let's not even. He's go a there. status, <laughs> but, but he is not operating second. within the law. <laughs> hold, let's hold be real clear here. The, the we'll do an episode is, though, on Batman, okay? <laughs> <laughs> superheroes. Um, superheroes. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, the po- the point is that those are the shows that. Um, are are put out there that's what is put in media it's 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 to show that the quote-unquote good guys with the guns are the only ones you should focus on and of course they're not going to show the average you know the average joe stopping a a, a, you know a a convenience store robbery just because he happens to be in there and he pulls a gun you know and, and nobody gets hurt and they end up calling the cops to come pick up the guy who was trying to rob the place and you know the store owner's happy or any of the customers are happy they're not going to show that that's not you know that's not part of the narrative and that's been it's been this way for a very long time and you know there's i mean how many actual gun laws are in the books whether it's federal or state or local or, or whatever across the entire country well yeah again if you know going back to our, our previous discussions on on the constitution and if you want to consider it to be a legitimate document, which we've discussed uh, at length before, that it cannot possibly be so. Um, but even if you want to to give that give it that and say it's a legitimate document, and then yes, we're going to follow the Constitution the, the way it was intended. Well, you're not supposed to infringe, which means no laws against guns. All of them, you know, all the way back to what was the first? What was it? There was one in 1906. Was the is that the Dick the Dick Act or the 1906 or 1908? Um, and you know, and ever since, every little thing, and and now, with the, the first gun, the first gun restriction or regulation put on the American people was to keep African Americans from owning yeah, guns. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, even yeah, even before, even before the the Dick Act, of course. Um, but that's it's just been a trend, and it's you know now with the the language that they use these days, it's common sense gun legislation. It's just they chip mm-hmm. away and they chip away. Um, but getting back to the you know the the story, the Dylan Roof story itself. Because um, you know, Danilo, you you mentioned some of the the, the tidbits about it, and I, I actually haven't been able to verify either way. There's a bunch of different, you know, there's there's several stories out there. One says that he was given the gun by his father. Another one, as I think we were talking about before the show, David said, and I looked that up, and yeah, there's a bunch of stories that say that too, that he was given money for his birthday, and he went out and purchased the gun. And then there's stories saying that the gun owner, the gun shop that he supposedly bought this gun from, the workers are claiming he didn't buy the gun. Uh, that he was never there. They have no idea who Dylan Roof is. Um, you know, and the, the, the messed up thing is, as usual, everybody jumps on the bandwagon right away and wants to give their opinion and get it out there first before they have all the facts. You know, even, even the the... The, the resident in uh, you know the, the the resident in chief at the, uh, the uh, Oval Office there over there, uh, he had to jump on right away and say something and you know his he gave the prerequisite. Well, we have to let the the families mourn first, but then after the mourning's over, we should have a discussion. And it's like 
you, you don't even know what happened, and he's not the only one. You know, it's, it's and it's actually it's gotten even worse because now it's both sides because the more conservative, gun loving, um, gun carrying type people. Um, who are also who are also hardcore statists um, will jump to the defense and say you know without having all the facts either and you know they'll argue with the gun control crowd who is jumping on and saying well he must have gotten the gun and you know the uh, he, he must have he must have bought it he must have bought it either illegally or we need more laws and it's like well if he did buy it illegally what are more laws going to do yeah right <laughs> he's still gonna have to do it illegally um, <laughs> if the story about his father is true what are more laws going to do I, I, I think uh, there's you know I think there's already enough with the background checks and 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 everything else it's just they uh, uh, you know most people want to they have that if it just saves one life mentality but they don't realize that you can enact every single law you want and like Dave said you could try to you know you could take away all the guns it's not going to matter because people who want them whether for defense or for nefarious purposes are going to find a way to get them you can get a gun inside a max security prison yeah. well yeah and and now with, so with, well, with, I, I don't this this whole gun ban thing is just so fucking i can't stand talking about it because it's not going to happen number one and i don't mean that is like it'll never happen it's not going to happen right now because I think people are becoming so much more radicalized radicalized against this government, especially with Obama, and especially if um, some kind of modicum of common sense doesn't get doesn't start pulling this thing back. Uh, people are just going to keep getting more radicalized. There, more and more and more and more stuff is being taken away from people. And you know, we were talking about the backfire effect last episode. <clears throat> and we were talking about, you know, people, they, they won't believe something until they see it. Well, eventually people are going to see it when they start coming from the guns. And, you know, everyone's got their line in the sand. You know, someone's, it might be taxes. Someone, it, it might be, you know, going to jail over pot. They might go crazy and go rogue. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that I stand with a lot of people in saying that my line in the sand is the guns. And I know, I know all these laws you know and, and and all these all these laws that are on uh, gun for guns right now are completely illegitimate i don't know how i don't know how in any way shape form or fashion any law like that is legitimate they should have all been beaten in court and took into the supreme court and beaten again uh every one of them uh i should be able to own a fully automatic ar-15 if i want one with a 200 round magazine and that fires baby killers and that's, I, that's, a, that's a good point you bring up actually you just reminded me of my debate with john and when he said uh he said what do, what do you want you want the average guy to own a tank or <laughs> what if a rich guy just some rich guy wants to buy a tank and then just terrorize people with it <laughs> well what are you seriously advocating for that <laughs> and uh i don't know it seems like it seems like a question like that is like operates in a vacuum. It's like nobody else is going to be able to arm themselves or retaliate if one guy wants to own a tank. It's like everybody is going to have to, you know, cower in fear <laughs> because nobody else will be armed, of course, right? Just the guy with the tank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. You know? John's got a tank, but Tommy down the road's got a stinger missile. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, Tommy and Johnny, hmm. well, it seems like they could figure this out. Well, they wouldn't even have to go that. It, the the other guy wouldn't even need that much, though. I mean, that that's the that's the ridiculous of of that the, the of that argument is that even even if you say, okay, fine, one guy in a neighborhood gets a tank and wants to, like, what is he going to do? Just start running over people's houses? <laughs> no, right. uh, and 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 if he does, okay, how long do you think it's going to be before? <laughs> A group of people get together and say, "God damn it, this motherfucker's running over people's houses. We have to stop him." Right. He's got to sleep sometime, and they'll just walk up to him and pop him in the head, and problem solved. <laughs> you know, so like, yeah, you know, because that—that's what they—that's what most people want to think. They want to get into that escalating. Um, what, Jeremy? Oh, you know oh, this? Well, well, if this guy has a tank, well, then that guy's gonna have a Stinger missile. If that guy's a, somebody's gonna have a nuclear warhead in their basement. 
<laughs> right. First of all, why would anybody want to have a nuclear warhead in their basement unless there's a nuclear <laughs> scientist and they know what the fuck they're doing? Because otherwise, <laughs> like you, you really think some some jackass that you that you don't trust who lives on your block is going to put a nuclear weapon in their basement because they touch it wrong and the thing blows up them and everybody else? Like, and again, even if there is a person who doesn't care enough that they're willing to do that. <laughs> then they obviously don't value their own life so screw valuing anybody else's life and that person is not going to be stopped by any law at any time ever <laughs> so the <laughs> fact that people like it, it's so it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, what is it the argumentum uh, absurdum or whatever it is how they just uh -huh. go on and on and on it's like really seriously <laughs> do you do you hear yourself does this like is this not are you just speaking words and not even like have you blacked out well are you it's, there it's it's, 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 the, it's the steps to retreat right it's uh, I, I've lost this argument. I've got to move the goalpost. I've lost yeah, this one. I've yeah, got to yeah, move yeah, the yeah. goalpost. I've yeah, lost this one. I've got to move. The, they'll never get past this goalpost. The nuclear <laughs> bomb. Whoa. It's like, no. Look, you know, we've already broke this down. How many power companies would buy those nuclear warheads from every government that's going out of business? All of them. Mm -hmm. They would break them down and use them for full fuel. Okay. Uh, but um, what's the argument? Jeremy will probably know this. You know the argument that liberals always say? Well, when the Second Amendment was wrote, they had muskets. They didn't yeah. have fully automatic miniguns. What, yeah. But they also didn't have the Internet then either. No, yeah, they have. Yeah, that's it's it's always oh, it, it only applied to muskets. OK, well, then the Second Amendment only uh, the First Amendment only applies to pamphlets and newspapers <laughs> and uh, handwritten letters. Yeah, uh -huh. right. You know, nothing. It's like it's so ridiculous because e and again, the, any any yeah, argument, your, e your emails and passwords, those aren't protected from seizure. Exactly. So it's like <laughs> anything that you don't, you know, they most people on, on, on in the status spectrum on either side, they only want to think about the argument. They only want to think about the arguments halfway. They never want to think about the other side of the argument because then they have to start questioning and going, oh, shit, wait a minute. That 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 doesn't add up. Like, you know, I mean. We've talked before about how you know logic is purposely not taught in schools, and the reason for that is because if you're able to use it <laughs> and be consistent, you when arguments like that are presented, you will look at both sides and say, okay, which which adds up, and if it's if you know it, if it if it can only be applied one way, then it can't be universalized. Well, it's not very freaking logical, and we don't really need it in this discussion, um, and you know, and that it, that's what it takes for people to to get over that hump. But most of them, they only want to look at one side, and they say, well. The, the the guns. Well, okay. What about the papers? Oh, that doesn't count. Well, it's the same goddamn thing. Well, no, it's the, it's different. Every everything's always different. It's like paper no. can't kill someone, Jeremy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you can get killed any number of ways. You could walk out of your house, and a meteorite could be you know be right screaming towards the ground and that's, clock you in the back of the, the head. That's the issue. Is everyone wants to use government to I... prevent risk in life? Yeah. It's and it's yeah. impossible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the nanny state. I think I think I remember the uh, the um, you know how how um, how many people die from like um, you know knives and bats and you know <laughs> um, bathtubs. The guy in China that killed car accidents. As the guy in China that almost killed two hundred people with a knife. <laughs> I just saw that. That was another one, right? Because that happened a couple of years ago. That actually, right after... Right, well, it's right because after... Obama said these types of things don't happen in other countries. Okay, okay. so someone used a less deadlier weapon and killed more people. So, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe he didn't go kill nine people in a gun-free zone with, you know, with a firearm. He, he, he killed 200 people with a knife at a school, which is wow. most likely a knife free zone <laughs> so you know this whole this whole thing can be if you look at every every mass shooting that's happened in the united states of america you might be hard pressed to find one maybe two locations that did not happen in a gun free zone the fort hood shooting that base was a gun free zone the aurora theater shooting with the the the, the, the joker wannabe guy gun free zone <laughs> yep. this guy this guy just now dylan roof or whatever his name is he just killed nine people in a church that is a gun free zone you look mm -hmm. at sandy hook was zone. a school zone for gun free zone so why isn't why aren't gun gun 
Why, when you go to a gun show and there's 300 people there, why is it some nut picking up a gun and killing 300 people there? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> if, 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 if guns are the problem, why isn't in every gun show nine to 20,000 people dying? <laughs> yeah. Why? Same Virginia Tech, Columbine, right? All, all guns why? <laughs> why is it not happening at gun shows? I'll tell you <laughs> one fucking reason why. Because the minute someone shot one other person, they would get dropped by three other people. Okay? Yeah. If everyone at that church was armed, Dylan Roof would have pulled that gun out and got killed. If everyone at that, if every teacher at Sandy Hook was armed, that kid would have gotten killed the time he entered that school. Okay? That, that is fact. Mm -hmm. At Fort Hood, if everyone had a sidearm that they were carrying, how many people would have died at Fort Hood? Mm, I would be guilt one, maybe two. And, and the other the other thing that people have to realize, especially so, socialists, is uh, uh, I guess Democrats, you could say, um, is uh, that in order to impose gun control regulations and disarm the people, you need people with guns <laughs> to come and disarm the people, right? So in order to enforce peace, you need guns, right? So the guns yeah, are not, yes. not the guns are not going anywhere. They're just going to be concentrated in a certain group of people when you disarm another group of people, right? So it's like the the um, you know compassionate and benevolent politicians like Obama, who uh, you know you know care about the children, you know how many guns protect him and his family <laughs> on a daily basis, <laughs> right? Yet um, well, he's, everyone well, else, he's, he's he's royalty. He has to be protected. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, that's well, yeah, the, that's the, that, my uh, whole argument. I'll, it's really quick. Is when you're advocating for gun confiscation, gun control in any any fashion, you're saying you want one man at some level to tell another man what he can and cannot possess. Okay? That is ridiculous. That goes with every kind of ban period. It, it, you know, you can go with the crazy nuclear warhead thing. If you, if if someone has a nuclear warhead and their plans are devious, they're going to be stopped. Right. Well, Some, even even if they detonate the nuclear warhead, you know that's good for the economy, right? Because destruction equals prosperity, right? Exactly. Oh man, can you imagine all the broken windows? <laughs> oh man, oh, crew. One okay, little <laughs> suitcase. Yeah, one, you one remember little, when uh, one dirty one little dirty nuke going think, off in my neighborhood? I think, I think, man, the think, windows for miles. I think, I think Krugman would have like a wet dream. <laughs> no, no. Remember, remember on South Park when uh, when uh, Randy Krugman might like, stroke out on that. Jesus. Remember when Randy couldn't have uh, couldn't watch porn for like two three weeks and he finally could <laughs> and then he and it was just jizz everywhere he was covered he was like oh <laughs> that's that would be krugman if a if a dirty bomb went off in new york city he'd be like yes stimulus that was his i guarantee you he was jerking off to the 9-11 bombings just ah oh, stimulus this freedom what, tower this is what we needed <laughs> yeah. exactly <laughs> no, I no, no. The, the broken window is so stupid. But this whole ban, like I was saying, if if you're saying you're saying you want one man to tell another man what he can and cannot possess, and then he's gonna go hire, he's gonna have people who are hired and paid with money to go confiscate this stuff for him, all on his opinion, and you're not gonna confiscate guns without other guns. You don't bring a knife to a gunfight. You don't bring you the. There, no policeman is going to come to the house. No sheriff, no National Guard is going to come by with a plastic tote. Says, hey, you mind throwing your weapons in here? No, it's going to be kick down your door. Give me your guns or die. If you move, I will kill you. So simple. Yeah, well, the the problem is that most of the, the really hardcore gun control advocates out there that, that say and... You know, I, sometimes I can't tell if they're if they're really just putting me on or putting themselves on or what. But you know, the ones that really say that they they would be for a, a complete gun ban, um, they have no problem with the cops being the ones with the guns because they are still so convinced that government equals good. Even if they disapprove oh, of certain things, they are they are still so convinced that the possibility of what could happen based on the years of fear mongering they have received and convinced themselves of um, is worse than 
the couple of inconveniences that government puts in their way. So they'll 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 be quite happy to say, yeah, I'll send. Some, uh, I have no problem sending, you know. But I think we were talking about that before the show too. That's that's another one of those things that you could ask, you know, ask one of them. Well, are you willing to go to somebody's door and take the gun? Are you willing to come to my house and say, hey, can I have this? <laughs> <laughs> It, uh, it, you, it reminds you, you have, me of you, that. You have um, no need for this anymore, and most of them will say no, and they'll automatically fall back on. Well, these guys have. Well, why do they get to have it? You know, they mm -hmm. they 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 kill quite a number of people a year too. You know, the the, the, uh, the cops. Yeah, did you see the Tom Woods the other day? The cop uh, kill to one hundred thousand ratio. Yeah. Well, you. Put, it was higher than any other nation. <laughs> yeah. Like average citizen and their police combined. Mm -hmm. It was one hundred and twenty-five mm -hmm. to one hundred thousand cops. And I think that the, the rate at uh, just if just plain old Jane American citizens is like eight or seven. Uh, it's so ridiculous that, that 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 in Honduras has the highest per capita per state kill by firearm or whatever, and it's like twenty two or twenty eight or so. It's it's but you know the American police officers are one twenty five. That is absolutely insane. Like oh, yeah. they have to they have to answer that. Well, they well they they'll they'll avoid it by saying, well, you you know they'll they'll try to say, oh well, they, you can't count them as murderers. They were catching bad guys. Well, yeah, try to try to have that compute with all the other cases that are quite public knowledge at this point of police brutality all across the country in all these different situations. You're telling me that you know for a fact every one of these people that were killed was done because they deserved it. You know, like that, that's ridiculous. There's so many cases where people were, ki you know, people killed in no knock raids where they got the wrong freaking address, you know, like mm -hmm. it's it, these things happen and it happens with, with, in, you know, with increasing regularity. You know, it's only been the past couple of years that, so, you know, a couple of independent uh, organizations have been keeping stats on this. And uh, I think it's, you know, last year, I think it might have been 1,400. Or was it 1100 or so, somewhere between 1100 and 1400 for last year? Um, the year before, the same thing, somewhere around 1200. You know, this year is already on pace to still be over a thousand. And a lot of those times, so many people will see that and say, oh, it was a bad guy. He was breaking the law. He deserved it. You know, as if being a, uh, a cannabis smoker and being caught and trying to run. Because you don't want to, you don't want to deal with the mess because you have a, a bunch of bunch of cannabis on you at the time, and you get killed over that. Yeah, that you deserve to have it. There's a death sentence because you were, you know, smoking a plant. Like seriously, <laughs> look, you were, Jeremy, you, were you weren't. The law. You were, you weren't obeying an authority figure. Okay, well, that, look, but that's the mentality. Look, you just need to learn to obey authority. That's your problem, man. You just have a problem with authority, and yes, I do. <laughs> you know, we're gonna send you to, a, uh, we're gonna send you to a concentration camp to get you retrained. <laughs> and so you'll be a happier, uh, more productive citizen. <laughs> that, that, J Jeremy, that that reminds me of a of a cartoon I saw recently. Uh, you see, you know, a house with a you know a bunch of uh, you know jackbooted thugs in their in their ride gear, you know, SWAT gear, and you know, busting down the door, no knock raid, and then and then uh, somebody walking by t talks to one of them. Oh, what's going on? What, 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 what what's in there? Terrorist or zombie or what? What, what do you got? Osama. <laughs> He's like, no, bag of weed. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's uh, and I remember I was listening to the the, the Prof C J, um, Dangerous History podcast, and one thing that really struck me was was right before the uh, the American Revolution started, there was actually um, I guess in the in the local uh, small governments they actually. Um, mandated their own citizens to own firearms. <laughs> they said you have to own one. You have to own this number of, uh, of Indians uh, lead, yeah, of lead, Indian. lead bullets, and you have to own a uh, bag, and you know you have to have the, the ramrod. You have to, you have to have it. <laughs> yeah, for various reasons, for defense or or for the British or for whatever. But and it's like imagine that today. What <laughs> how strange that would seem for. You know the local. How, how many liberals would kill their own children just to prove their point? <laughs> like yeah. this gun is unsafe. It killed my child. <laughs> you know, yeah. Oh, that that that. Uh, no, no. Um, S Sweden or no, no. Switzerland has like mandatory gun gun ownership, I think, as well, and um, their cops are unarmed. When, when's the last time you heard of a? a uh, Switzerlandian cops getting killed. Swiss, Swiss, Swiss. 
<laughs> yeah, my bad. When did you uh, hear? When's the last time you heard of a Swiss cop getting gunned down? Yeah, but their but their whole setup is also the reason everybody ha pretty much everybody has a weapon is because they're all conscripted, aren't they? Aren't they're all part of the even 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 though Switzerland never invent you know everybody thinks of Switzerland as being the neutral party because they never get involved in anything. But I think part of their deal is it's conscription. You have to, and you don't. You have to serve two years over there in the military, I believe. No, yeah, if you're exactly. Able-bodied, and then you're then you're able to keep one. But I can't remember if you're allowed to keep it at your at your own location, or you have to have it at an armory or something like that. But either way, I think way, you're allowed then, to keep it. Even still, the conscription thing just throws that whole out you know, that whole idea out the window for me. I, I understand that. Oh, and I, uh, we could talk about that for days. Well, yeah, but, um, but he, well, even even with the revolution. No, story, it just I, drives me nuts that there you have this amount amount of people. That are armed, you know, and that's my that's my case for increasing the effectiveness of American police is to disarm them under ex uh, unless there's an extreme situation, then you would call a SWAT. Like if you had an active shooter, a bank robbery, something like that, some kind of property that they would be defending. Um, not, hey, let's call a SWAT team because someone's got a plant in their house. Hey, let's call a SWAT team because someone didn't pay their electrical bill this month. Oh. Like, hey. Why couldn't five? Uh, why couldn't one unarmed police officer go serve a warrant to someone who didn't pay their utility bill? Why was the people were were, were they afraid the person was going to get gunned down and say, "Hey, uh, I'm from the police department. Here's your utility bill. You need to pay it, or we're going to kick your ass out of here." Uh, no, no thanks. Bow. No one's going to do that. <laughs> like well, somebody. No, let's kick somebody, down. Let's... Somebody might. So okay, someone to. might, but. It doesn't. It, let's wait for the first case of that to happen. There's no way a SWAT team was warranted to go serve. That SWAT team lost the state more money to pay overtime than it did that they would have collected on that utility bill. That state probably state monopolized fascistic. Well, the, um, the SWAT the SWAT teams are, par, are are a big part of the problem. That they were the beginning of the militarization of the police. Well, there's it, certain scenarios that a SWAT team is necessary on all levels. You, you if no. Because you're uh, an, act, an active uh, shooter, someone holding hostages, something like that. You, you, you people, need you need people you, who are trained, who should be trained to do that anyway. If they're the ones supposed to be protecting everybody else, you know. Of we're, course, if we're talking but, about a hypothetical free society where you have private defense. You know, it's 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 that it's that scale that just once you start on it, it, it end, that's where things end up going haywire. Because that you know the SWAT teams of the of the seventies, what was it, uh, Philly and and uh la where they started out in the late 60s early 70s you know like that was the beginning and that's where because once those are around you get accustomed to seeing them and then people clamor for them in certain situations oh there's been and, movies and, and tv oh, shows yeah. about it and and oh, that, that, yeah. unfortunately that's what one, one of my you know one one of my guilty pleasures is SWAT. SWAT is unfortunately still one of my favorite movies, the one with Samuel L. Jackson in it. Oh shoot! Uh, <laughs> you know it's one of those things I just can't let go of. Should I hang up on him, Danilo? Should confession, I just get him out of here? confession. I vote yeah, for that, Obama. I vote it, for Obama. <laughs> like SWAT movies. You still win. So I um, still like war movies. Give me a break, all right? But, I love Saving Private Ryan. Oh, I dude. never liked war movies. Never liked. Oh them. man, yeah, it's but, great. But that, but my my point was that you know that's what started all this and and people are so used to them now and and so many people like yes the uh, utility bill example i can't imagine there's too many people out there that would find that acceptable but there's a an entire swath of the population that has no problem with a swat team being sent in on somebody for drugs if they can be convinced that you know the ever popular intent to sell is attached to the to the charges even if there was no intent to sell you could have somebody who grows a bunch of plants on their own property or in their own house or in their attic or whatever it is just for their own personal use or maybe them and a couple of their close friends and that's all they ever do and they don't charge anything they're not making any money you know it's just just so they don't have to go out and spend more money and people like that you know if if they have you know grow lights and you know I've, I've seen i've seen stories like this before where if you have you know grow lights in your attic and you know those those copters that go by every once in a while and you know when they're looking for drugs they they sense the, they have the heat sensors and they mm. sense that and people you know somebody like that could get caught up and end up getting killed because these no-knock raids um especially for the drugs they love to do these things at night so they they think they're going to catch the people you know unaware and if a bunch of guys come slamming through my door in the middle of the night and I wake up and I have no idea what the hell's going on, first thing I'm doing is grabbing from one of my weapons and I'm shooting the first thing that fucking moves. 
So like, and I'll end up dead. And no matter what I did, no matter what it could have, what, what I allegedly did, I'll be dead just because these, you know, somebody broke into my house in the middle of the night, like automatic thing. I got to protect my family, you know, like why would, you know, but you, there's so many people that will see that and go, oh, you, well, you were the one doing a bad thing. So you deserved it. And again, mm -hmm. if you had just obeyed, mm -hmm. you know, you know, same thing with like the, you know, just obey. How, how much time do you have, you know? Mm -hmm. Just like with the Tamir Rice situation in what was that in, in Cleveland? Uh, was that yeah? Was that what uh, last year or two years ago? The twelve-year-old, you know, mm. two seconds. How do you have any time to do anything in two seconds or less? Like you have, you can't make a decision. You can't recognize what's going on. And you they they drove up and jumped out of the car and just started shooting. Yeah. They could have they could have parked at a safe distance, turned on their microphone and said, "Get on the floor, throw the gun, and do not move," and then covered each other. Yeah, how he, yeah, but but, he, but then they he, wouldn't have got to use their their toys. No, if he did that, then they wouldn't have gone on paid vacation though. So, <laughs> that's the problem. But yeah, but so so these things these things happen in, in in a lot of different situations, and you know, and again, there's there's those people that will say, well, they the other person did the bad thing because they're so conditioned to think, as you know, police officers as this authority as this higher you know they, they have a higher claim to 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 life than anybody else because they it takes like ridiculous corruption being finally uncovered or it takes a blatant situation where the cop like in the what was the situation down in texas with the pool party where that cop resigned because he was catching so much shit right away that he was just like i'm, I'm out of here like there's those <laughs> rare situations where that happens, but most of the time, you know, the state protects the state. So they will do everything in their power to cover these things up. And that, going back to something I was, you know, mentioning earlier about the disparity, you know, disparity in uh, the deaths, you know, by police officers and stuff and, and people looking at that and saying, oh, you must have been doing something bad. Well, no, it, it happens so often and on, on these you know quick things that you have no idea and there's so many people that are killed over victimless crimes that yes that's why those numbers from the tom wood show i mean to me weren't that shocking but to, to hear them to the average person it's like whoa they kill that many people <laughs> that's a the, lot the, the um the, the other shocking thing to me is you know when you're watching these cop movies you know they they portray them as like brave valiant fearless you know jump into the line of fire to protect the innocent right um and that's the image that people have because that's what they see in these uh you know major motion pictures and in reality <laughs> as larkin rose did in one of you know titled one of his recent videos cops are cowards <laughs> they do not jump in the line of fire they do not you know run in <laughs> into a you know where there's a mass murderer they they don't they don't sacrifice their lives in that in that way like you see like I, I remember there was this one story of this guy on a train he um, he he was on a train and then it turned out that there was a guy a crazy guy with a knife and I think he's did you hear about that um, yeah this was uh, the guy's name was Joe something this this happened yeah. in, the, in a New York City subway yeah uh, like yeah, five yeah, or yeah. six five or six years ago maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know that story oh my god and I haven't and, heard it and oh, so, oh, the, yeah, right, so, ahead, so, so so the guy I forget. Was he robbing? Was he trying to rob no, him, or or he just, no, just killing the, people, or something? The story. The, the way I remember the story is he had already killed a couple of other people. Okay. And it was okay. like this crazed guy, and he hops okay. on a train. Yeah. And he's he's still he's got the knife in his hand that he's already attacked yeah. other people. I don't remember if he killed them. He had definitely attacked people. I don't remember. If, I can't okay. remember how many actually died, but he had attacked multiple other people, and he hopped on the train, and he was threatening the other people on the car with him and there's this yeah. guy sitting in the corner this guy joe something or other kind of a big you know big yeah. dude um mm -hmm. and he's sitting there and he's watching and he's watching and he looks out of the corner of his eye and in the very next car there's two new york city either new york city police of uh, police officers or mta police officers watching everything that's going on yeah. through the window <laughs> yeah. And he's looking at them and looking at the guy and pointing to them and pointing to the guy. And they're basically like shaking him off like, we're not going to do anything about this right now. And he finally like ended up getting up to tackle this guy. And he got slashed pretty bad and stuff like that. Yeah. And the cops waited until he had helped to do this guy. 
with well, like, and, and, he, and he was yeah he was unarmed too yeah, completely <laughs> like, unarmed no, no knife. yeah yeah and he you know i think i think the i think the, how the story went is a couple of the people after he finally like jumped up and did something like the paralysis was broke on a few other people because everybody else was just standing there in fear like what the hell do we do there's this crazy guy with a knife what the hell yeah, are we yeah, gonna yeah. do and yeah, 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 yeah. a couple of people helped him and they, and that's when the cops came over <laughs> and this guy, this guy got his, got him, you know, he got a huge couple of huge slashes through him. Like he got yeah. pretty messed up over this and he just couldn't believe it. And he was somebody, he had said that before that he was a huge supporter of the cops and he yeah. didn't think, you know, he really believed the whole couple of bad, you know, the few bad apples things. And it was like, that was an eye opening experience for him that they were literally within feet of this guy doing this and they weren't going to do anything because they were more concerned with protecting their own lives than stopping this guy from potentially hurting something else, so someone else. And then, and then, and then after that, when when he saw the uh, the news stories on the um, you know on the me on the mainstream media networks, um, it did not mention anything about him subduing the guy. It just they just talked to the it was, police it was, officers. It was hero cop. Yeah, it was hero cops <laughs> stop this crazy madman on a train. Yeah. Yeah. And it was and he and he finally came out and like they, like. I had heard some stories. I, I don't remember. I never verified them or not, but I had heard, had heard some stories that he actually received death threats oh, because yeah. he came out and spoke. Like, you know, people from like the police unions and stuff were like threatening him. It's, yeah. it's like, what the hell, man? I just risked my life to save a bunch of people that I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. And I'm getting, the, you know, I'm getting shit on here. Like, you know, that's just not right. And it's like, it, it's funny because, you know, like I was saying, they, they were more concerned about protecting themselves. And that's something we've discussed before, how they're trained that even if the words aren't said, what's put in their mind is you're more important than everybody else because you must protect you. You must make sure you and your partner are safe first before anything else happens. So that automatically puts you on a different level. And yes, self-preservation -preser is one thing. In a, in a random occurrence, most people are going to react to preserve themselves first unless, you know, unless you're like a parent and your automatic instinct is to protect your children. You know, like that's, that's normal. I get that. But like they're really trained, like, and that's a great example that they're literally standing there, armed police officers with guns, <laughs> and they did nothing with this knife wielding ma maniac, you know. And it's and it and it's that whole, you know, so many people. And if and if Joseph or whatever his name would have pulled out a gun and shot the guy, he probably would be doing oh, prison. They, uh, prison, they would have blown him away. They would have shot him if he had pulled out a gun to stop this guy. Almost, most likely. Or they, yeah, or like, or if they had been nice enough about it, they would have waited till he was done and then arrested him and then yeah, set him off for and you know, illegal firearm or whatever they could nail him on. Yeah. But it's that whole, but the fact that some people still believe that protect and serve mentality is so ridiculous and and beyond the 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 the. Oh, it's the, so like well, uh, well, be, we gotta the, tech the Nate next trench, you know. I don't care if everyone's gonna die. Like that's every law. It's like it's so arbitrary. It doesn't make sense. Well, I was gonna say the the protect and serve thing because I heard it. Who is it? I think I think Bill Buford said it the other day. It's, it's not protect and serve. It's punish and su punish and submit. That's mm -hmm. what they're all about because mm -hmm. they're not you know and that's beyond the scummy SCOTUS rulings that you know they're not there to protect you you know they're not there to protect the individual. You know, that's just beyond us. They've never been about protecting and serving. Yes, back so, in the day, there might have been cops in local communities who cared about their communities and wanted to help. But their job, first and foremost, is to clean up messes, not stop crime. The war on drugs uh, radicalized the police force. But, uh, Danilo, how would you fix mass shootings in, in one way? What's one way you would help prevent? <laughs> Force everyone to be armed. <laughs> yeah, arm yourself. Education. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah. Exactly. You know, a, a well-armed populace is a is a polite populace, right? <laughs> I mean, there's a there are some great uh, memes that I saw about you know various countries and the you know the uh, percentage of people that are armed in those countries as opposed to other countries, and then and then the relationship of crime in those areas, you know, in those countries as compared to other countries, and and you know, I mean, you don't even have to look at countries. You just look at places in the United States like the cities that have the strictest gun control laws like Chicago like you know various Detroit, cities yeah. Yeah, Detroit. Detroit you know you just and you see gang violence you know it just you know just horrible things happening on a daily basis and uh, <laughs> because it's always the good people that give up their guns the ones who are the law-abiding you know, tax-paying, decent people that <laughs> claim to be decent. The people they, that get in the trains going to Auschwitz. We get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, um, 
the people that just um, obey the law, whatever the law is, whatever the arbitrary mandate is, they will obey it. And and those are the people that willingly give up their guns because they are, you know, peaceful people supposedly, but they advocate for the uh, some of the most violent, violent edicts known to man, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and 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 the, and the police do protect and serve the politicians, of course, <laughs> not the people, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. So so you you have to understand, you know, you know, it's it, it's 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 uh, so important to understand, you know, the the um you know the economics of being a monopoly right a monopoly on violence and when people think that the police should be the only ones with guns you have to you know realize what 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 is the characteristics of a monopoly that has no competition that is that is paid through stolen funds right it has no accountability no responsibility no no um duty to protect anyone but themselves so why would they use the that power to help the people, you know, they don't view the people as customers. They they don't view the people as um, <laughs> you know friends. They view the people most often as uh, you know just fodder, <laughs> right? So so you have to people have to realize like, what what is a monopoly a, a monopoly on violence and what does that entail, right? And when you give people pow that kind of power and usually. As as you know, we were talking about in the previous episode. It's it's kind of like the movie Idiocracy, right? It's rule by the stupid, rule by the most intellectually inept and morally bankrupt people. <laughs> Those are the people that seek positions of power, political power, and positions of physical power and <coughs> bullying, as in as in the police officers, right? Because when when they know they are the only people with the guns, yeah, they're the bullies. However, when they know that other people have guns, they're no longer the bullies. They back down and they slink away and they slither into the darkness again because they wouldn't dare to confront people. I mean, there's on their blocks same wave in Chicago that cops won't go because they'll just get shot at constantly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, what? You, but, you know, this this. What what is what do you what do you have to say about this, Jeremy? How how would you stop mass shootings, as rare as they are? Well, yeah, they are they are pretty rare. Although they get played up in the media so much that people think they happen every other day, um, and the only time they do happen every other day is in those situations you guys are discussing with the you know the completely gun free areas where you know the gangs take over. But it's I mean. The, this is one of the things that I can easily agree with the uh, you know some of the constitutionalists and the and the uh, the Second Amendment crowd. The the their solution is 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 really is simple. It's, you get rid of the gun free zones. You don't you know you can't have zones like that. They 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 are a target. They will always be a target. Those bad people that 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 are out there that so many people fear and insist we need government for, are still going to exist without a government. So that the, you can't stop them. There's, you know, in, unless you perform full-scale eugenics on the entire world population, those people are going to exist. So they're going to be there. So what would you rather do? Pray that they go away? Pray that adding every single law you can ever think of will eventually trigger one of them to say, hey, maybe I shouldn't do this anymore? Or would you rather have people be armed even if it's not everybody, even if it's only a couple of people, because again, I, I don't, you know, the whole idea of, you know, the the mandated gun ownership, while back in those times, it, I guess it made sense, you know, it's still mandating something. If somebody doesn't want to own a gun, you don't have to own a gun. If you don't want to be protected, if you want to count on somebody else doing it for you, great, go for so, it. So the argument I'm going to throw back at you is what if I own a private the a movie theater and I don't, I want it to be a gun free zone? That's fine. That's on okay. you, though. If you, I, 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 okay, I, I should I should amend that. Gu the the gun free zones in quote unquote public places. If a private owner, you know, if a private business owner wants to have that rule, then you know, pr property rights trump all. That that, I understand, will, that, yeah. that will always be the case with me. So you know, you're right. I, I should I should well, amend that. I should, I even have said even that broad term. And even to make the constitutionalist case even stronger, there, if the constitution should apply anywhere the most, it should be on public property. Well, that's all it should apply to. It should never. It should never. It should never. If if you're going to take the Constitution literally, if you're going to believe the quote unquote in, the the intent of it, and that not not that it's an actually an illegitimate document because it, uh, it creates and codifies a, a ruling class, even if you want to say that it's you know the what the intent was is what the intent was, 
then you know private ownership trumps all and the gov the the constitution was written as a set of rules for government so it only applies to government on what they want to deem to be government property what you do on your own time in your own property is none of their effing business and never will be but you're you don't understand we're all property well, yeah, yeah. Well, well, the again, governments. Like I said, I, I no, no. Saying, I'm just messing. I know. With you. I was saying, if if you want to follow what people believe the intent to be, but no, the truth is, yes, you know. Which I, I was I was talking about this with somebody the other day. That that whole notion that you know, people think that government's necessary to protect property rights. Well, no, that's impossible because in order to quote unquote protect people's property rights, they have to violate people's property rights every single day. You know, taxation or you know extortion is a violation of your property rights. <laughs> so how do you how do you protect something by taking it away at the same exact time? That's a contradiction that you can't avoid. Okay, so, so so yeah, so you take so you get rid of those you get rid of those areas, you know, the schools. So you know, there there's plenty of teachers, especially after Sandy Hook. There was plenty of you know, all you saw in the news was the teachers that would come out and say, "Yes, we need stronger, you know, the ones working with the unions that would want to, you know, come out and say whatever the union people told them to say." And they'll, oh yes, it's horrible. You know, we had we had a situation last year here in, um, it wasn't even with a gun, it was just uh, uh, a mother had gone into a school here in, uh, in 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 one of the quote unquote bad areas around here, um, and attacked the teacher, <laughs> like physically attacked the teacher in the in the classroom, and uh, all the all the teachers were out there screaming about we need more security, we need to be more protected and stuff like that, and it's like. But there was other people that you don't see on the media that were saying, well, hey, if we were allowed to protect ourselves, this wouldn't be a problem. If I was allowed to concealed carry while I was working, I mm. could have walked up to the woman and say, stop that right now and pointed my gun at her and said, that's enough. And mm. my friend wouldn't have gotten the crap kicked out of her. You know, <laughs> like that, that's the whole thing. All, all you, you know, and same thing with Sandy Hook. There was a couple of teachers that worked there that said after the fact, again, didn't get a lot of publicity, but there was even teachers, you know, had, who had never held it, you know, people who had never held a gun before that were like, I'll get training, I'll, I'll get certified, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'm willing to carry, you know, if one or two people were armed in those situations, so many less people would die. And of course, the normal argument is, oh, well, they're just, what if they shoot wildly? And what if they hurt more people? Well, no, these people are willing to be trained. These people are, are willing to follow the laws and get certified and do whatever it takes. And do accidents happen? Yes. But still, you know, you accidentally wing somebody else. Is that bad? Yes. But you still take down the shooter and 10 less people die. Isn't that a net positive right there? You know, so it's just it's ridiculous because that's all you really need to do. I mean, obviously, well, places like here in New York, yes loosening the ridiculous gun laws um, would be a huge step too because you know there's that old the old saying you know an armed society is a polite society and so many people these days trash that and say oh that's ridiculous it can't possibly be well no think about it if even if you're somebody who's not going to follow the laws in general you are what society would deem a criminal laws don't stop you they only slow you down if you're that type of person what it, you know no matter what you're doing you know burglary um you know wh whatever it is if you you're going to look for easy targets that's their game they look for the easiest target possible so they can maximize their you know maximize their exposure get it, get what they can get and get the hell out of there so if if you now have a society where you literally don't know who might be carrying a gun how likely are you still going to be to act on these impulses as regularly? Because now you have, you have to take that extra risk. You know, when you're in a situation like in New York City, people still get robbed there. Why? Because pretty much nobody's allowed to carry a gun except the cops. So if you get mugged, you know that there's like a 95, actually in New York City, probably 97% chance that the person you're trying to rob is not armed. Something and, I read the other day warmed my heart. It was like... Uh... Two million New Yorkers have refused to register their assault or ass assault weapons. Uh, I will not really? confirm nor deny that I am one of those people. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, but, uh, I, well, that, that happened after the Safe Act passed when there was so many people that right away were like, I'm not, screw this. There's no way in hell, you know. That, the, that, that, the, I read some of the Safe Act and it was like, your, one of your family members can call 
and say that you have mental issues and that could be enough to have your guns uh -huh. taken away. Oh, yeah. Well, that, Which that is was, ridiculous. That was the big scare. Well, well, when the SAFE Act passed here, it was ridiculous because it, I, I think I might have talked about this in one other episode before. It was literally they threw this thing together right after Sandy Hook happened because Prince Andrew uh, is convinced, was, you know, convinced that he needed to be at the forefront and he needed to set an example for everybody because he still has, you know, he still has presidential aspirations. He will never get elected president, thankfully. I can't stand the man. His father was an idiot. It was an idiot. He's even worse. Cuomo? Uh, yeah. Or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> but when, you know, he had to rush this through and they literally, I remember, because this was when I was, I, I, I had learned to volunteerism, but I had not quite made the plunge yet. So I was still like a minarchist constitutionalist. So I was with the Oath Keepers and everything. And I was getting flooded with these emails and, and trying to keep on top of all this. And like, literally, it was like one, two o'clock in the morning that they finally signed this thing. And Cuomo right away, he had this policy where he waited three days on every bill and he was he was going to take his time, you know, for for a show to make everybody think that he thinks about things first. And he just <laughs> had to waive that three day wait, waiting period for this. This just had to go through. And I think there was like literally a handful of less people that voted against this. And it was just they just they just ramrodded it through, and they were like, I, I mean, they had to backtrack on some of it because people right away, the first thing every, the first thing all the local gun groups did was like got their lawyers on their phone, like, all right, how can we, how can we tackle this? How can we, you know, right away take this to a Supreme Court, you know, a, a, a state Supreme Court ruling, and, and get, get this, you know, so they had to drop the magazine ban because originally they dropped it to seven. There are no freaking magazines that hold seven bullets. They didn't think that through. They, it wasn't you could only have seven bullets. You could only have a seven-round magazine. And yeah, and then I can drive what two two hours one way, cross the border, go buy one, and drive right back. Well, yeah, you can hop in a PA and get it, but but you know they were going to be stringent on it. And then you know Cuomo gave that gave that impassioned speech where his 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 you know line that was quoted everywhere, where all the gun control advocates suck you know sucked it up. Was you know <laughs> you don't need ten rounds. No, or nobody needs ten rounds to kill a deer. And like it was one of the few times I actually wished that I'd been in the audience for a, a uh, you know, for a political rally, so I could have just screamed back at him and be like, "Nobody wants to kill a deer, you freaking moron! We want to kill you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or at least, or sorry, at least have the ability to do so if necessary. The deer is not extorting me. Come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the deer isn't doing jack shit to me. Actually. So. so yeah, I, no, no, like um, this whole gun grab thing is. Uh, it's funny, in all the red states, like heavy red states, like I live in Alabama, the last 10 years, gun right, like you're about to have constitutional carry here uh, next um, state <coughs> state assembly gathering. Uh, you're going to, it's going to pass. Uh, this, so you can carry a bazooka on your back? I don't think that that is possible. Well, that's not constitutional. No, no, no. What I mean by con <laughs> constitutional, like no one can, no one can take you. No, you don't have to have a uh, concealed carry to uh, conceal. Like in Alabama, right now in Alabama, uh, for you to con for you to have a firearm, if you don't have a CCL, which unfortunately I do, uh, concealed carry license, uh, you have to have. If you're if you're out in public, if you're not in any kind of can, car or vehicle or public transit or whatever, your gun can be uh, show, shown. You can open carry, wide open. You could have an AR-15 on your back walking down the road. All right. Um, the minute you get into a car or any kind of vehicle or any kind of concealed thing, the bullets can't be with the gun, and the gun has to be locked up. It's the most ridiculous thing in the world. And I know. So, <laughs> like, I, I, I was at, I was talking to the sheriff when I was applying for my CCL, and I was like, so <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm down in a bad part of town, and I'm getting surrounded by a few people, and I have my gun in the glove compartment and my bullets in the console. Um, <laughs> how screwed am I? And he just laughed. He said, yeah, I know it's a little ridiculous. And I said, yeah, that's why I'm getting this, because that's BS. And, and every gun restriction is against the Constitution. He said, I agree. We hate enforcing it. And I'm like... <laughs> but we do it anyway. Cause it's, but you do it anyway. That's what I said. My, I'm just doing my job, man. I said, but you I'm do it anyway. I'm doing my job. I literally said that to the sheriff at the counter. I said, but you do it anyway. Um, uh, but, you know, uh, I think next year uh, we'll have a constitutional carry here. Um, Montana is a, also a wild state. Like, you can own fully automatic weapons. You can, uh, 
you can do pretty much everything as long as you don't leave the state. You can own bazookas, whatever, tank, whatever. As long as you don't leave the state, as long as you're in Montana. So it's pretty wild. Um, but, you know, here's my, because we're going to try to wrap up here. Here's my way to fix mass shootings, okay? Quit making guns scary. Quit demonizing guns. Start demonizing the people who use these guns for nefarious means outside of private property protection or, you know, property protection. And do away with gun-free zones, government gun-free zones, okay? That, that should not be a thing. All right? Public gun-free zones. Private gun-free zones are one thing. If I went to a place, if I go to a restaurant, I can still carry everywhere I go. If I go to a restaurant and they have a no-gun thing on the store, I say, baby, we got to go somewhere else. I'm not going in there. They've lost my business. So that's that freedom of association and the disassociation that we talked about in one episode that but you can't have that in public because everyone owns that so the constitution should apply more heavily to that area right so what you have to do is you get away get away from these gun free zones you get away there would have been not a sandy hook shooting there wouldn't have been a fort hood shooting there wouldn't have been uh, there probably would have been a little Aurora uh, gun shooting because it was a gun-free zone, a theater, which I don't know if that's a state-mandated thing or no, it's... He no, went, he went out of his way to go to that one. I think that the story was he... There, I, I think they found a web search on his computer. There was actually like... <laughs> it was like the third or fourth furthest away movie theater from his location, and the reason he went there is because the other three, the other two or three, allowed, allowed uh, concealed carry there. Or, hmm. or, or maybe even open carry, whatever it was, but they allowed it. This was the one theater that I um, even go to that places had, that, that, that have had, that had it that had a ban on it, and he he specifically sought that one out. If you're not searching me, I'm carrying my gun. Honestly, like I mean, if you go to a ballpark, they're gonna search you, right? Metal detectors searched, right? If you go to um, some kind of big stadium event or whatnot, they're yep. they're searching everybody. So that's pointless to bring your gun there, but. Like, if I go to a restaurant and they have no guns allowed, I'm bringing my gun. Sorry. <laughs> uh, what if a robber kicks in the door while everybody's eating and then walks up to the register and I kill that guy or stop him from stealing your money? What are you going to do? You're going to say, well, no guns are allowed here, so get out. No, oh, you're not no, going to say No, you get congratulated and then, then also slapped with a penalty. Then also slapped with a, 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 some fines or maybe some jail time for having a, an R, a firearm where you're not supposed to. No, no, no. They, they, that's <coughs> just private property. You can't make a rule that overrules the Constitution, really. <laughs> <laughs> right? Say what? No, no. Like, like, all right. So if I, if they can't, it's like a parking yeah. in a. So then almost every new rule that comes out. No, no. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It overrules with the Constitution, but the private property owner, right? This restaurant, restaurant A, whatever. They see me have a gun. They can ask me to leave. They if they call the cops. I, I live in Alabama. I have a CCL. All they're going to do is say, hey, the owner has asked you to leave. Will you please leave? And I'll leave. So it's that simple. So I understand that, but until I'm told to leave, I'm not doing that. And I'm not going to face penalties. They're not like, look, we have a law on the books that says if a place says that you can't have guns on here, we're going to enforce gun control in this place. Like, that doesn't exist. So, um, but yeah, Danilo, Jeremy, you guys want to wrap up on this whole gun control is a kind of an idiotic idea thing. Yeah, I mean, the, another way I look at guns is, um, you know, it's just a tool. Right? It's an inanimate, inanimate object. It's like a hammer, like a, like a chainsaw, like a car. You know, they can all kill people, um, but <laughs> they're inanimate objects, and they're they they do things. <laughs> depending on, it's like it's like a computer. You know, it's like it's like a computer has a has a problem, like a bug. Do you blame the computer or do you blame the programmer? <laughs> right? I, I, shot, I shot down a tree the other day with my AR. I literally cut a tree in half. You're an well, animal, that's an alternative. Oh, I'm pissing gotta... some hippies <laughs> off. I'm pissing the hippies <laughs> off. We're going to get some environmentalist comments in the, in the comment section. All right. I'll, de I'll debate <laughs> any environmentalist that approaches me. <laughs> so... So yeah, I mean it's just it's just a tool, you know. These are these are like you know like technology, like you know, you, uh, like tools. I mean, it's tool is what makes our lives easier, right? Like like anything that that has prog that has lifted us out of squalor, out of the the primitive barbaric nature of uh, you know past tribes and nomadic uh, nomadic people. 
Th those are just tools, right? Everything that makes our life easier is a tool, right? And just like any tool can be used for uh, good or evil purposes. So it's always the person wielding the tool that is in question. That's what you have to determine when you're <laughs> when you think about these ridiculous laws. Is that you know, and the same, same same thing with the drug the drug war, right? You know, it's not it's not the marijuana that goes in jail. It's the person, right? <laughs> <laughs> right so so it, it's it's always the person doing whatever uh you know it's it's, it's always so it's, it's always against people right it's not about gun control it's about control right it's about control of the people and their property and what they can do with their property right because as jeremy said the state is the incarnation of the vi of the violation of property rights right it cannot exist without violating property rights on a daily basis so very true so to have it to have a government exist to protect property rights is a uh contradiction in itself right so yeah uh, jeremy you want to say any last words before we yeah i i mean i think i think we've we've all said a, a lot of the same things and it's you know the this the, the solutions are simple you know if you don't want to own a gun don't own a gun stop telling other people what they can do though you know for those those gun control advocates out there that that every time this happens you you insist that well here's another one we we have to do something ask yourself a few questions are you willing to go door to door and take people's guns from them? No. Then doesn't that make you a coward for asking somebody else to do that in your stead? You know, it's it, why 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 put more people at risk just because you fear the possibilities? You know, just just look at the track record. It's it's all it's all there for you to see. You know, as Dave mentioned, you know any. And any full-scale confiscation will eventually lead to some some sort of democide. Uh, people can keep thinking that's not going to happen here. Well, it's happened here before. It'll happen here again. It happens all over the place because when people in power increase that power by taking whatever little power the people have away from them, anything goes. It doesn't matter anymore. They can enact whatever laws they want because people won't literally won't be able to fight back. But the Bill of Rights protects us, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, you keep, you, when, when convenient. You, you, keep, you keep thinking that and let me know how it works out for you. And the only other thing I'll say is I forgot to mention it at the beginning of the show, but the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the BIPCOT NoGov license. This allows for reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much. And, and one other last thing I'd, I'd like to say is, uh, like you said, Jeremy, you know, if, if you don't like something, don't advocate your neighbor be um, <laughs> robbed of that ability to do that, whatever that is, right? So if you don't like porn, don't watch porn. <laughs> if you don't like guns, don't own a gun, right? If you don't like, uh, you know, weed, don't smoke weed. It's just a simple decision. <laughs> if you don't like dancing in the woods, don't dance in the woods. <laughs> right? If you don't like incest, well, <laughs> so so easy. It, it, it's not about <laughs> it's not about in enforcing. It's not about like enacting legislation. You, you know, you can't legislate morality, right? So so you know, when you advocate for these laws, it's always increases violence in society, right? Increases chaos and disorder, right? Because statism is chaos, right? Anarchy is order. <laughs> People have to have to kind of understand that that uh <clears throat> that, that reverse. <laughs> so uh so um yeah, so if you guys anyone listening wants to uh, donate, help out the show, freedom is not cheap. <laughs> um we can uh we, we accept Bitcoin and uh, through Patreon, is it, the Patreon site is up, Dave. Yeah. Yeah, we still got a little work to do on it, but yeah. So I've been uh, saying that for like a month now, but we we're gonna get to it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm just gotta sit you guys down and record a few videos. If you guys uh, want to send us some value in any form, um, you know, Litecoin, Dogecoin, uh, Bitcoin, whatever you got, we'll figure it away. Even if we don't have it, if you want to send it to us, we will make a wallet, all right? So if you want to say, you say I only have Dogecoin, all right, we'll get a wallet for you. <laughs> we'll figure out a way to do it. Or Precious Metals, help out Jeremy. He's trying to, he's trying to help his business. Yes. <laughs> Or, so, just, uh, or, or just sh or just share us. That, that, or I, share, I, like, I, I actually, I appreciate, listen, I appreciate listen. that. Caring means sharing. <laughs> and sharing means you care. <laughs> so if you like what we're doing, Post it on your timeline. Post it on Twitter. 
tell a friend, put it on your Tumblr, put it on your Instagram, whatever you can do, share our stuff. We love it. That's more than that's worth more to us than any kind of money you can give us. Uh, is a share. Uh, the the if you don't know what Facebook ad rank is, Google it, and that will help you spread all the people who make content that you enjoy that much better because that's how the things are going these days they want you to pay for views but and, when you share that you can circumvent that and and uh, dave what's the <clears throat> website for the the t-shirts teespring t e e s p r i n g dot com forward slash seeds of liberty i'm should be having a shirt every month excellent so if you want to start uh... until i can save up enough money to start printing them myself <laughs> yeah, if you want to <clears throat> fill up your wardrobe with Caesar Liberty gear, by all means, <laughs> we'll appreciate it. Uh, well, the way Teespring works, and, and I've been trying to say this on Facebook, is uh, I've got the price a little higher, and you're not really buying the T-shirt for this price. You're buying the T-shirt to help donate to us and get something back, a T-shirt <laughs> that you can wear and impress your friends with, with <laughs> snazzy colors. Nice. They, nice. Could, they could look at it and say, who the... Who the fuck is that guy with a pot on his head? And why do you have that on your shirt? <laughs> well, his name is Dave. No. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> Thank how you, everybody, many, for listening. How many people have said that now? Dave, is that you on that picture? <laughs> All right. Uh, awesome. Thank you very much, guys, for the conversation. So this is the Seeds of Liberty podcast. Uh, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Peace. Bye. Bye. Force of Freedom on Wednesday. <laughs>